Newcastle has spent big. In fact, Newcastle has spent more money in the January transfer than anyone else uh, in Europe, of course, in that quest to get them out of the relegation zone. Uh, Norwich City are the team they're looking to catch. Uh, Don, I imagine you're very excited with your Newcastle ways. Absolutely, Dan. I mean, I was desperate to try and get Jesse Lingard over the line towards the end of the transfer deadline. But when you look at the signings that Eddie Howe's brought in, I mean, I still can't believe I'm pinching myself that we've got Gimaresh because I can't believe there's other teams. I mean, I know Arsenal were pushing quite strong, but I can't believe none of the top four were chasing them because this kid is incredible. Chris Wood, solid signing. Dan Byrne, really good centre-half who offers a bit of balance. Uh, Matt Target, another good signing from Aston Villa. He's an upgrade uh, on what they've got in that position. And I think Kieran Trippier, yeah, he set the, the mark, didn't he? He was the first one in. And, you know, I think hats off to him by being the first one and sort of taking that leap of faith uh, you must have had the conversation with Eddie Howe when they sat down together and Eddie Howe said, listen, you know, be the first one, come and join us. I'm going to try and sign as many possible and loads of quality. I think I was more interested, Dan, in, in the quotes that Eddie Howe said when the transfer deadline was closed and the morning after he said, you know, I, I was after more talent. I was after world-class players. But because of the position that we were in, we just couldn't convince them to come to Newcastle while we're in a relegation battle. So that tells me if they do stay up, and I hope that we do, he might move again for them players in the summer. Nadam, take us through kind of that first day of training with all these new faces in. Because I'm thinking, like, if ESPN FC got a big new budget and they brought in a new presenter, you'd be like, ugh. So I imagine those centre-backs who are currently <laughs> playing for Newcastle and you're seeing all of these new boys coming in, you just must feel like, well, it's almost the, the end is nigh. Um, I think in some ways maybe you would feel that based on the fact that there's new money coming in. But the fact is something needed to change. I think defensively they needed to be better. And if these players are going to be worth their weight, the ones who are already there, they need to be able to handle that level of competition and understand that you know, if they want to be part of the club, then these people are going to have to come on board and try and figure it out. So I think in some ways seeing Newcastle's first window compared to City's all that time ago, it's not like City's was because they were a bit more stable and you had like Robinho coming in there. But ultimately for Newcastle, those players, I think they fit the mentality that's needed right now. I think for those players, whether they stay up or they go down, I think they'll be staying. But I think they understand that, you know, there's more to this at the moment than just nice football. There needs to be some substance there. And that's great with the signings from Dan Byrne to Trippier to Chris Wood. I'm looking forward to seeing how Guillermo Esch does in Target as well. I think it's the, they're the right signings for Newcastle right now. And, you know, for the people already there, it's time to step up. Because if you want to play, yeah. you know, you've got to be at your yeah. absolute best. What's yeah, it like Jamal though in Michelle's. training, Don? If it, like the, the, some of the current players, Dan Byrne has got a big target on his back, has he? No, not really. No, the players have to accept it. And I think Nadam's right. And the first player that comes to mind is the club captain, Jamal Lascelles, who's been in there at the side. He's caused Eddie Howe one or two problems. Uh, there's a little bit of friction going on between the club captain and the manager. So it's up to him now. He's got to pull his weight. He's got a, a, a serious player in Dan Byrne to try and either play with try and dislodge Fabian Scher, the, the, the competition's there. For Gimaresh, he'll obviously go straight into the side and Chris Wood leading the line, Trippier at right back. Target will go straight into the side at left back. So it puts it puts people like Matt Ritchie, it puts people you know, like Paul Dummett under a little bit of pressure because what are you going to do? You're going to walk into training on day one and you're going to see Matt Target at left back and think, well, that's me done. That's that's not <laughs> yeah, normally that's that attitude you have. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, maybe, like, but that's yeah. yeah, maybe, but that's not the way professional footballers are built, or how you sh how you know the good players are not built that way. They say, right, listen, I had it at, at Everton, Dan, when when Walter Smith was the manager, and he signed uh, John Collins and he signed Olivier Decor, two really really top players, and the manager got me in his office and he turned around and said, just to let you know, Don, you can phone your agent. He went, um, I've signed Olivier Decor who was a brilliant player. John Collins in from Monaco, outstanding play. When you can move, you're not going to fit in my side. And I went, I'm not moving. And he went, what do you mean? And I said, he said, well, I've signed two players. You're not going to play. I went, no, no, no. I said, I'll back myself. I said, I'll, I'll back myself to be better than John Collins. And I'll wow. back myself to be better than Olivier Decor. And secretly, when I went out the room, he loved it because he knew he had a player that was, wasn't going to take the easy way out and go, oh, okay, boss, I'll just call my agent and move. And within a couple of months... He ended up playing the three Sunderland. of us in midfield. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, off to Sunderland. No, within two or three months, I was in the side and I convinced him because my attitude was right. I didn't just give in. See, th I think this fascinates, fascinates me and I think people who haven't played at this mm. at any sort of level because on the outside looking in, 
you think, like, mentally, that is no. such a strain. And, and they're like, if they bring in a new goalkeeper, which you obviously had, David James coming right. in, or whatever it might that, be. But that, that, that's, the, that's the culture of the game. First of all, Newcastle are down there for a reason, because the players aren't good enough, and even when you are in that dress, you know that. And you know to get yourself out, you have two choices. Players come in and we stay up or we get relegated. And in, in all honesty, even as a player, you're thinking, I'd prefer to see new faces come in and we stay up and then we, we fight for, for those, spot, those spots, as right. Don was, was pointing out. The other thing, too, is that's the nature of the game. You've been competing for one spot from the earliest days of playing football, at under 10 or whatever it is, that there are always a number of players competing for that very same spot and you've been able to beat others out. Moving clubs is a, is a, we've all been that new face right. at some point, unless you come through the academy, of course, but you've all been that new face arriving at a new club for that first day of training. So you know what it's like, and that's just the nature of the game. And, and if that gets to you, you'll find yourself out of the game quicker than, than you, you are able to stay. In the spotlight even more so, surely on goalkeepers, in that there is only yeah. one, there's only one position, but you're training together yes. every single day in this kind of unique bubble. Yeah, and, and So that, when you're sat on the bench, are you rooting for them? I'm rooting for them. That's, when I'm on the bench, I think my role is to get the best out of them, get the best out of the starting goalkeeper. But I have been in situations where the other person hasn't felt that about me, or you've heard stories about that with, with other goalkeepers. I, I right. remember when I arrived, what was it West Ham talking to, to, to Les Seeley? He was talking about two goalkeepers who wouldn't even kick the ball at each other and to do handling to, to warm each other up. They, they, they just wouldn't. Wow. So, wow. you know, which that, that, makes a re, that makes for a tough, a tough position for everybody. Right. Because you thrive in that competition too. You know, as much as, as, much as it's part and part, you thrive in that competition. You need that competition. And when it's, it's that way, you suffer as a player, or, or as a, in this case, as a goalkeeper. Nathan? Yeah, I was going to say, realistically, this will kind of reveal why England, why Newcastle squads are like. Because the fact is, if you're not prepared to fight for a place in the team, then what chance have you got when you go out there and you're playing against 11 others who are being paid to try and take three points away from you? You know, mm. that, this, as I say, it's a, it's a great revealer. And when somebody new comes in as well, they may go straight into the side, but they still don't have the full trust of the playing staff nor the working staff. So the fact is they have to prove themselves. So, as I say, whoever's been there the longest, if you'd start throwing your toys out of the pram because someone new has arrived... I think kind of shows that they probably weren't there for the right reasons in the first place, to be honest. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.